first group of tissues we're going to talk about are called epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are covering, uh, so they're going to cover organs as well as their entire body surface. In fact, our first system we look at, the integumentary system, is the only dry cutaneous uh, epithelial membrane. It also line, these tissues also line the cavities and hollow organs. They make up glands. They have a free surface and a basement membrane. Uh, the free surface is on the outside and the basement membrane would be on the inside of this overall membrane. Tissues that are epithelial tissues generally do not have blood vessels. They are considered avascular. Uh, they get their nutrients by diffusion from tissues below them, the underlying connective tissue. However, cells within that are classified as epithelial tissues tend to be able to divide very rapidly. Injuries to them heal quickly, provided there's enough nutrients getting to them. Uh, we talk about bed sores at some point. Cells are tightly packed. Uh, they're classified according to two different things, uh, according to their cell shape and the numbers of layers of cells that make up the membrane. The possible shapes are squamous, which are flat, uh, cuboidal, which are roughly the same height as they are width. They're not really cubes, uh, uh, they're not perfect cubes for sure, but roughly same width as height. And then columnar, which are taller than they are wide. They can be a simple uh, layer, which would only be one layer of cells squamous, cuboidal, or columnar, where they could be stratified. Uh, in the stratified, you have it, uh, two or more layers of cells, and only the surface would be either squamous, cuboidal, or columnar. So they would uh, not all the cells in those layers would be that shape. And then there's a third type called pseudostratified, which can appear to be stratified, but in reality it's not. It's only one layer of cells. We'll look more closely at that in a few moments. So simple squamous is a, a thin layer of flattened cells. Uh, their substances are able to pass easily through them. These are important for places where we want to exchange material. For instance, in the lungs, the, the uh, gas exchange occurs through simple squamous epithelium. Additionally, capillaries would be lined this way. They're thin, they're delicate, and that makes them easy to, prone to damage. Uh, they're going to be found in places where we're doing diffusion and filtration to exchange. A uh, good example again are the linings of the air sacs, the alveoli within the lungs, and the capillaries within blood vessels. Uh, simple cuboidal cells are single layered cube shaped cells. Again, they're not perfect cubes, but they're roughly the same width as height. They are places where we're going to have secretion and absorption. Uh, there are a lot of them in the tubules of the kidneys uh, and in the thyroid follicles. They're found in the ovary and they're also lining some ducts in uh, certain glands. The simple columnar are a single layer of elongated cells. They're taller than they are wide. Nuclei are usually at the same level and this is really what makes them different from the pseudostratified. We'll see in a second. Uh, they often have cilia, uh, sometimes microvilli. They are going to be goblet cells dispersed among them. Goblet cells secrete mucus. Uh, they're places where we get secretion and absorption. They're going to be found in the uterus, very important in the digestive system. They're found in the uh, stomach itself and in the linings of the intestines where we are absorbing materials for nutrients. And pseudostratified columnar looks like it may be more than one layer, mostly because the nuclei are not all aligned. There are two or more levels of the nuclei. The, shell, the cells themselves vary in shape, except they will be taller than they are wide. They are places that help protect us from infection. Uh, they often have cilia, and those cilia in our respiratory passageway beat with a to move mucus from lower parts to upper parts, and they will also have goblet cells secreting mucus interspersed within them. So now if we go to the stratified layers, the stratified squamous is a many cell layer thick uh, protective layer. It's the outermost cells that are squamous, and it's always going to be the outermost cells uh, that have the shape that we're talking about. The deeper, deeper than that, they get to look a little bit cuboidal. 
We'll find these on the outer layer of the skin. In fact, next week we'll spend a lot of time talking about the individual layers of the skin. They are also found in the oral cavity, in our anal cavity, and in the uh, vaginal cavity. Stratified cuboidal, two to three layers of cube-shaped cells, more for protect. That gives you more protection than one layer does. Uh, we're going to find these in the ducts of the mammary glands, the sweat glands, salivary glands, and the pancreas. Stratified columnar, uh, only the top layer really looks columnar. Below that, they're kind of cuboidal shaped. They're found in, uh, rarely, but they are found in parts of the male urethra and the ducts of some exocrine glands. And then we also have to talk about transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium or uroepithelium because it's part of the urogenital tract uh, is many layers thick. They're kind of cube-shaped and elongated cells. Uh, they're sometimes referred to as pillow cells. And that allows them to change shape as, they, as the organ they are part of fills with fluid. So we'll find these in the urinary bladder, parts of the ureter, and the urethra. Glands come from epithelial tissue. Uh, glandular epithelium is composed of cells that produce and secrete substances into ducts around their body fluids. There are two major types of glands, endocrine and exocrine glands. Endocrine glands secrete fluid uh, into, or secrete secretions directly into fluids or blood, whereas exocrine glands have a duct that opens onto a surface somewhere. Uh, so exocrine glands have ducts, endocrine glands do not. Uh, structurally, and exocrine glands would include unicellular or multicellular. Unicellular ones are a single cell, uh, those glo goblet cells we talked about in a couple of the epithelium were uh, single cell unicellular exocrine glands. And then we also have some multicellular, uh, which would be composed of many cells. They would be sweat glands, salivary glands, uh, and they could be simple or compound. In a simple, the duct, the exit to the surface, does not branch. Uh, in a compound, the ducts branch before they get to the secretory portion. In a tubular, there are epithelial line tubes, and in alveolar, there are terminal portions that form a sac-like dilation, similar to what we'll see in the lung, but that uh, alveolar and the lung are not the same as alveolar uh, exocrine glands. So exocrine glands can be unicellular, multicellular. The simple glands would be a simple tubular gland, simple branched tubular gland, simple coiled tubular gland, or simple branched alveolar gland. And there are characteristics and examples for all of those. A compound gland could be compound tubular or compound alveoli. Uh, and I'll leave that up to you to look into. American glands secrete fluid by exocytosis. Uh, salivary and sweat glands, the pancreas, you are American glands. Apocrine glands lose a small part of the cell during that secretion. Uh, mammary glands and ceremonious glands are examples of apocrine glands. Holocrine glands release the entire cell filled with its product. Uh, sebaceous glands are an example of holocrine glands. So we've got simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, pseudostratified columnar, stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, transitional, and glandular epithelium. Simple squamous, uh, air sacs of the lungs are a great example. Simple cuboidal, the lining of the kidneys, uh, we'll see them there. Simple columnar. Uh, the stomach and the intestines are great examples. Pseudostratified. Most of our respiratory passages are layered with pseudostratified epithelium. Stratified squamous. Uh, skin is going to be our biggest one. Uh, skin's a little different than the others. Skin is a dry membrane. All the others are moist membranes. Uh, but it's still a great example. Stratified cuboidal. Uh, mammary glands. We will find them there. Salivary glands. Stratified columnar kind of rare. Male urethra has a few and some ducts of excretor excretory glands. Transitional epithelium is only found in the urinary bladder and the ureter and the urethra and it allows the bladder to fill without um, uh, increasing pressure within it. 
Glandular epithelium includes salivary glands, sweat glands, and endocrine glands. And I will stop it there.